Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, Spare Parts, and today I'll be reviewing set number 75207, the Imperial Patrol Battle Pack. This set came out in the year 2018 to coincide with the Solo Star Wars movie, and the set comes with 99 pieces, 4 minifigures, I mean, it is a battle pack, so they usually come with 4 minifigures, and it retailed for $15, so let's see if it's worth it. So here is a first look at the set. As you can see, the vehicle is back here, and it looks like typical battle pack size vehicle, I guess. Usually in a battle pack, they kind of include a side build as well, but in this one, they don't really do that. It's just the speeder, but the speeder looks pretty good at first. Then you can see we have four minifigures, and they actually look really cool at first glance. The one problem I have with them is stud shooters. Like, why do they have to put stud shooters in battle packs? I wish they would just put, like, normal blasters, like this piece or something. It's just stud shooters. I know they're, like, play features, but they're just so heavy that, like, getting them to balance like this, like, it took a little while to get them to stand up like that, so... Overall, looks pretty good at a first glance. All right, time to look at the play features. Well, there really is only two. Anyway, the first one is there are stud shooters on the front, and I will show you, if you don't know how stud shooters work, I will show you later with the minifigures, because the minifigures also include stud shooters, but that's what these two things are. And I don't know, they don't stick out too much. They might stick out a little too far on the front, but I don't think they're that ugly, because sometimes stud shooters can look a little ugly on sets, but... I don't think that's the case here. And then a second play feature is you can put a minifigure in the speeder. Yay. So really you just take your minifigure and you kind of sit them right here. And I actually really like the seat that they use the two stud design instead of the four. Cause sometimes when you put a minifigure on four studs, it's kind of hard to get them out. And like sometimes his legs will get stuck in there, but two stud design works really well. You just pop them in there. And then you can also kind of put his hands on these like, control things it's it's kind of hard to do sometimes but you can do that i'm not going to do it here but if you fiddle around with it for a while you can do that so it looks even cooler while he's driving the speeder i must say i really like this design it's super cool but anyway moving on since this is a very small set there aren't that many pieces that are likely to be loose i mean the only ones i can kind of think of are maybe these and like this weird thing that sticks out in the front just looks because they're like attached with the clip pieces and that can sometimes be loose but they don't really ever come off, so it's pretty stable. It's not going to fall apart on you. And another thing I wanted to point out, it's kind of cool with the set, is it's really satisfying to mess with these, like, hinge pieces, because, like, the way they get this slope design is they have these hinge pieces in the middle, and just messing around with them and making it, like, do this. I don't know why. It's really satisfying to me. I don't know. Not that many weak parts. Moving on, the stickers and prints. Well, there's barely any in the set. But we did get like an Imperial insignia right here and over here. It's just a one by one print. Glad it's not stickered. I don't think they usually do stickers in battle packs, but I don't think this is unique. I think it's in other sets, but it's super cool. I'm glad they included at least some print. Moving on to minifigures, we'll start with the two stormtroopers in the set. I'm not really sure what they're called. I think they're like patrol stormtroopers, but they are in solo for like one scene in the entire movie. But I think they look really cool. I really like this color scheme. It's super awesome. Like, I'm glad they're finally making, like, really cool stormtroopers instead of just making cool clone troopers. I don't know. It's super cool. One problem, of course, is the stud shooters. They just are kind of big and bulky, and they're weighted really weird. Another weird thing about these minifigures is that, like, if you look at the leg piece, like, the piece that connects both of the legs is white instead of black and usually on stormtroopers it's like there's a black piece right here but instead it's white in this set i don't know it's kind of interesting just wanted to point that out and also underneath the helmets which is a super cool mold i'm not sure if it's a new mold but it's definitely a new print looks super cool underneath you just have the normal angry face next minifigure is the imperial general or somebody who's in command as an imperial i'm not really sure who this is supposed to be but he looks super cool. He has some nice torso printing, and on the back he has some nice back printing as well. Wow. And it's kind of detailed, but anyway. And he has some nice head cap printing, I guess. I don't know if you can really see it, but look really close. There's like a dot thing. I'm not, I don't think it's an Imperial logo. I'm not sure what it is, but kind of brings the figure together. And he also has a stud shooter for some reason. I'm not really sure why a general has a stud shooter, but if you don't know how they work, you just kind of do that shoots off yay finally we have the imperial gunner or i think that's who this is i kind of wish that on lego instruction manuals they'd tell you who is who or just their names instead of just having it on the box because i kind of like throw out throughout this box five years ago 
But anyway, I think this is an Imperial Gunner, and for once it's actually a female Imperial, like, trooper. It's super cool. They usually just have man face prints, but I think it's really nice that this one has a female print. But anyway, she has some really detailed torso printing, no leg printing, that's okay. She has a, another stud shooter, unfortunately, and she does have a double-sided face. Let's so turn it around. It's like just a normal face, and the other one's angry, so that's super cool. Moving on to accuracy. So this is a really hard category to talk about because this is literally in the movie for like one second. You just see it chasing Han Solo in this one chase scene. And by what I saw in the movie, I think it's pretty accurate. Although I do think that in the movie, it's a bit slimmer. Like it's not this spread out. Like I think these should be closer together, but I don't think they could replicate that in Lego. So I think this is really accurate. Although I guess the minifigures aren't all accurate, but still it's really cool. And I think it's pretty accurate to its one second of screen time. All right, price for peace time. So price per piece with a battle pack is actually kind of a little different than normal price per piece. I mean, if you even take price per piece into account, I personally think it's kind of, it can be good and it can be bad. It can just be confusing sometimes. I don't know. But anyway, if you were to buy this set and in 2018, when it released, you'd pay $15 for 99 pieces. So yeah, exactly 99 pieces. That'd be around 15 cents per piece, which is pretty bad for a set. But Taking into account that battle packs include like four minifigures, you really do get your value back. But if you're just looking at price per piece, it wouldn't be the best, but I still think it's a fair price. And just in for inflation, it's around $20 today. And I'm not sure how much this costs if you were to buy it online today since it's retired. So I'm guessing that if you were to buy it today, the price per piece would be pretty bad. But for at the time, I think it was fair. So overall, what do I think of this set? Well. I think this set deserves a 9 out of 10, to be honest. I feel like it's a really good battle pack. Although I know some people like to build their armies with a battle pack, and, like, you can't really build an army of Imperial Generals. I mean, you could, but it'd be kind of weird. But I think this is really good. It has some really nice minifigures. They're really detailed for the price. I think the speeder is really accurate. And for me, I don't really care about the army building aspect of a battle pack. I usually just buy one for the minifigures. So overall, I think it's a 9 out of 10. The only problem is stud shooters. But really, that's not this set's fault. Because that's just what LEGO decides to do with battle packs. And I kind of wish they'd change that. So overall, 9 out of 10. So there you have it, guys. That's my review of set number 75207, the Imperial Patrol Battle Pack. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to like and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one.